I'm Christine DeFugis with Mole Making Technology, and I am here with Don Smith, North American Tooling Manager for Sholey IPN. Hi, Don. Hi, Christina. And Don's here with me to talk about how COVID-19 transformed training within mole making. All right, so let's think about COVID and its impact on actual training. One of the big things that I heard a lot about was cross training. That was a big thing that everybody was kind of jumping on board. It was at a necessity, quite frankly. You say there are seven key components to a good cross training program. Can you review those? Sure. Uh, number one is that because we are in that, um, that intersection in time and that culture from going from one generation to the next, uh, so the number one thing that I try and look for is the ability to reverse engineer. For example, I still have 30 year old, 40 year old molds that um, you know need to be repaired, need to have components made. So I'll look for a tool shop that has the capability to do that reverse engineering. Uh, to come up with a 3D model if they need be, or in some cases just cut it manually, uh, whatever is most cost effective. So that's really one of the things to do. And then from a training standpoint, reverse engineering to the younger generation really helps them because now you have a proven entity and now you have something that you can use as an example to say that how we could make it better in today's generation. So reverse engineering would be number one. The second thing is that you can take with the current softwares that are out there now, you can take some of these old tools and once you do that reverse engineering, uh, now you can run those through a virtual analysis. Mm -hmm. And now you can upgrade and see where you can specifically add components, maybe some better cooling, some better water lines. So the next generation that you're gonna build from that particular tool, now you can upgrade it through virtual analysis. So now that the different softwares out there are, are really getting good. It, to actually go into a molding analysis, um, and thereby you can get cycle times, you can get really good expectation of what is gonna be coming out of that particular tool. Uh, another one is uh, mold engineering capabilities. So um, that one is, you know, the use of, you know, again, uh, learning what the, a GPM is, how many, how much flow, how much dissipation of heat. So true engineering functionality, how you can incorporate that into a mold, right, or into a component. Uh, hot runner system knowledge. We know we're having many, many different types. So whether it be, you know, even conventional cold runners. Uh, going hot to cold, going full cold or full hot to uh, valve gates, sequential valve gates, servo driven gates, all these different things. So that's something where the cross training would have to come into play uh, from the older generation to the newer generation and vice versa, mm -hmm. right? To go, go that way as well. And then manu and then measurement. There's you know there's there's a lot of um, you know places out there that uh, have CMMs and they have all the high tech. But if you really don't have good fundamental metrology uh, that's taught at a fundamental level, how to read a mic, how to do a gauge R&R &R and all these other things. So using all your manual methodologies, uh, gauge blocks, and then cross- The fundamentals. The fundamentals. So you build on the fundamentals because the CMM, if it's not set up correctly, you're, you're gonna get, you know, number one, I think it's doing that, but it's really not, right? So fixturing, how to measure, understanding tangents, understanding, especially if you're molding or measuring plastic parts, that they're not perfectly round. They're, they're basically, they have some ovality or whatever to them, some, some distortion, so understanding where that goes. Um, so that's really something that you could do uh, along the way. So how you measure, how you scan, how you put that in there. And then basically experience with high cavitation. So, uh, you know, the different uh, variations, cavity to cavity, the tolerances, that, uh, and then understanding what critical dimensions are to the molder or to the OEM, so that when you go through a validation process, you can take the tool out of the equation because now your consistency cavity to cavity is, is, is there. So understanding that it has to be the same because that's really what you're doing in a high cavitation. And then the final one would be injection mold testing capabilities. So going through from uh, what we use is a first off tool. So we'll check functionality, we'll set a basic uh, baseline process for that particular tool. 
Uh, we'll run it for four hours, make sure, pull it apart, make sure there's no wear and everything else. So if all of that's good, then we'll go to an FAT, and then we'll start dialing in the process to an optimized process through DOE, and then we'll run and measure parts before we do any steel adjustments. And this is at the, this is at, still at the factory before the site actually accepts it in. So we go through all of, the, the, all of that science that goes through that, many different variations on the plastic parts. So we'll optimize the process through software. So once we get that optimized process uh, and everything's good and everything checks out, we make our steel adjustments, we'll repeat it to make sure that everything came through that we wanted to. So now it's in specification. Now we can send it to any site uh, in, the, in the globe and then they will run their basically the same testing you know, scheme again and make sure that they can produce the same part within parameters. So now what, once all of that's said and done and we have the sensors that are in place and everything else, we run a design of experiments and now we can set our high-low parameters and now we know that anything that's within those parameters on all cavities will be good quality parts, right? Now we can turn the lights off yep. and now we can just move on that's to the next project. That's tooling 4.0. That's tooling 4.0.